not working for George Steinbrenner any longer where the, the criteria is championships and going for it and pulling the trigger and getting the job done. Now the criteria for Brian Cashman is uh, we're about the process. It's about being good enough to compete. It's about giving ourselves a chance. Don't y'all notice how vague that is? So in other words, we get to the postseason. We give ourselves a chance to win a World Series. He's done his job. We had 30 guys on the injured list. We still won 103 games. We got to the ALCS. I did my job. Never mind the fact that Granke was out there. Never mind the fact that you once had a chance to get Garrett Cole. Never mind the fact that, hell, you could have got Verlander. Never mind the fact that the New York Yankees have been complaining for years, or New York Yankee fans have been complaining for years about the lack of an ace. Houston has three of them. Because Granky damn sure looked like one in game three of this World Series. They had three of them. We couldn't get one. This is Brian Cashman. We put ourselves in a position to win. We're good enough. We made the case. We tried, ladies and gentlemen. We fought the good fight. I mean, listening to this man is some sickness stuff right now. It hurts. I ain't gonna lie. Because there's a satisfaction with being a contender. Never mind the fact that you're the only squad, the only Yankee squad, since 1910 to have gone a full decade without making it to one World Series. Never mind that. Never mind that. No, 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 that's not important. No Yankee. No Yankee organization since 1910. That's more than a century. No Yankee franchise has gone a full decade without a trip to the World Series. But this one. And Brian Cashman literally is quoted, John, in the newspaper. I, 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 I'm going to sleep well at night. I'm going to sleep well at night. The Jets and Giants made history together. It's the first trade done between these two New York teams. Leonard Williams doesn't even have to move. The Jets trade him to the Giants for a third-round pick in 2020 and a fifth-rounder in 2021. And Leo clicked right away. I mean, he went to USC. I went to FC as well. And the Giants wanted some defensive line help, and the Jets want draft picks. They've got to rebuild their whole offensive line and then some. The best thing is you don't have to move. 776. You can also reach me on Twitter, at Dan Grasa. G-R-A-C-A. And if you missed my opening segment, go check it out on demand in the Stephen A. Smith podcast brought to you by Capital One. Capital One is reimagining banking, offering accountants with no fees or minimums that can be open in five minutes. Capital One, what's in your wallet? Capital One N.A. member FDIC. And it's time you prep your engine for winter with Pennzoil synthetic motor oil, the first motor oil made from natural gas, not crude oil. The proof is in the Pennzoil. Talking World Series with game number six tonight in Houston, a game that you can hear on ESPN Radio. We're pleased to be joined by our pal, our outstanding ESPN baseball analyst, Tim Kirkchen, who joins me from Houston. Tim, it's Dan Grassa. How are you? I'm well, Dan. It's uh, game six. Uh, can't get a whole lot better than this. I guess game seven would be even better. Absolutely. And, you know, it's funny because I was just talking about it before. You mentioned the fact that it's game six. One, The way that Davey Martinez figures to manage this game tonight, kind of with that all-hands-on-deck philosophy, A.J. Hinch has the luxury where maybe he doesn't have to necessarily empty the bag of tricks because they do have that fallback for game seven. This is the Nationals game seven tonight. Yes, there's no doubt. So I think we're going to see... All those starting pitchers, all hands on deck, all of that stuff ready for tonight if anything goes wrong with the Nationals. So Steven Strasburg's going. He's great. But if he needs any help, we'll see Anibal Sanchez, Patrick Corbin, just about anyone uh, because they got to get to Game 7 somehow. And if they do get to that Game 7, I mean, certainly you're holding out hope if you're a Nationals fan that maybe Max Scherzer rides in on the horse to save the season, deliver the championship, and it's still very much a gray area. Have you spoken to anybody connected to the team? Are they optimistic at all that he's going to be available in any way should this go to tomorrow night? 
yes, I have, but I still am unclear about the status of Scherzer. To say they are encouraged, I wouldn't go that far at all. Um, this is a serious injury that he has, and Mark Teixeira, who's had the exact same injury, told me this takes two, three, four days to clear up, and we're not going to be at four days by tomorrow. So I, I'm worried for the national sake that he's not going to be able to pitch. But the, the other danger is he says, okay, I can go, I can go, when he really can't because that's who Max Scherzer is. So I don't know if he's going to be able to pitch tomorrow. We'll find that much more about that later tonight. But at the same time, he's got to be careful to not be the hero, he can't go out there and pitch when he's not physically capable of it, and we'll have to see about that. Last week when you left Houston and departed for D.C. for Game 3, Nationals were in control of this series, they were up to love, and it looked like they were in the driver's seat. Did you ever think there was a chance, not that the series would get back to Houston, but the momentum would have shifted so dramatically as it has given the last three games that transpired? Uh, no, I did not see this happening. I did not see the Astros going in and winning three games. I did not see the, the Nationals being held to three runs in three games. I did not see the Nationals going one for 21 with runners in scoring position at home. But it proves, again, and this series has made absolutely no sense, and that's what makes it so interesting to me is Cole and Berlander just don't lose back-to-back -back at home in games one and two. That hadn't happened all year. And then the Nationals had not been limited to one or no runs in three straight games. And then it happened in the World Series. So anyone who thinks he knows that what's going to happen tonight hasn't been watching the rest of the series when none of it has gone according to script. Now, you're right about that. And we're talking with Tim Kirchin, our ESPN baseball analyst. Game six of the World Series tonight in Houston. You can hear it on ESPN radio at eight o'clock. You know, for any team that wins a championship, and I don't care if you're a juggernaut and you go wire to wire leading the entire sport, you always still need these guys, whether they're role players, complementary players, chipping in and delivering in big moments. And you just look in this World Series for the Houston Astros. Yeah, they have plenty of star power, but look at the couple of big knocks that Robinson Chirinos has given them this year. What Jose Urquidy did for them on Saturday in Game 4 was nothing short of brilliant. All of these things starting to add up in the Astros' favor, which would give me a heck of a lot of confidence if I was a Houston fan heading into this game tonight. Right, and this is kind of the secret formula for the Astros is their lineup is so deep. They can hurt you in so many ways. They got 20 or more home runs from eight of the nine spots in the batting order this year, including 50 homers from the leadoff spot. There is no end to their lineup there is no rest for a pitcher their nine hitter can hurt you and this is why they're up three to two now is they have different guys who are carrying the load depending on the night one night is Chirinos the next night gets Altuve the next night it's Springer and I just don't think the Nationals have that many weapons not nearly as many weapons as the Astros do how about for these offenses? Well, before we get into that, let's talk about Washington because clearly that's the reason now they're down 3-2 is because the offense disappeared in those three games in D.C. You mentioned that they scored three runs, one for 21 with runners in scoring position. You can identify so many different guys in this lineup, Tim, that you're just waiting for that breakthrough. And you could start with arguably their best hitter in Anthony Rendon, who has had a fairly quiet World Series. Howie Kendrick, who was so big for them in the NLCS, he's been MIA here. I mean, they are probably just waiting for any one of these guys to come through and get that big hit, which might be able to turn the tide of this series again in their favor. Right, and Trey Turner needs to be in that Him group, too. too. He's three for 22 in the World Series, and he's a really good offensive player. Now, let's understand first, of course, they are running into elite pitching with the Astros, not just in that great rotation, but that bullpen for the Astros is really good also, which we've seen. And again, this is the beauty of baseball is without explanation, the team goes from scoring 17 runs in two games against the two best pitchers in the league to scoring three runs in three games. And one of the games is started by a guy who pitched 41 innings his entire career in Jose Orquidy. So 
there's so much going on here, but it just takes one hit to break things open for the Nationals. We'll see if they can get that here. They certainly didn't get it in Washington. All right, you have two pitchers going tonight, which pitched earlier in this series. How much of an advantage do you think this is for the hitters on both sides that you just got to look at both of these guys not too long ago, and now you're seeing them again when you step in that batter's box? Well, there's no doubt when you get to see them a second time in this short of a time frame, it's an advantage for the hitters. But the advantage is always, always, always for the pitcher in these situations if he locates. In other words, you know Steven Strasburg is going to throw that curveball. You know what it looks like now because you've seen it. But if he throws it where he wants to at the right time, you're not going to hit it. This is how baseball works today, and it's probably always worked. You find pitchers with elite stuff, and two of them are starting tonight, and they locate. You cannot beat them. You cannot hit them. They don't just get you out. They strike you out. All these home runs we've seen the last few years, and especially this year, is when you miss location. If you miss location with our hitters today, you're going to get killed. But if a great pitcher hits his location, then the pitcher is going to win virtually every time. Tim Kirchin, ESPN Baseball Analyst, joining us here on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Dan Gross is sitting in for Stephen A. Yes, they're both elite pitchers tonight in Strasburg and Verlander. Verlander's going to the Hall of Fame. But it's gotten a lot of attention over the last couple of days, Tim. The World Series record for him, his performance, has not been great. And we've already seen him pitch in this series. He's 36 years old. He's thrown a lot of innings this year. Would you be concerned in any way? And normally we don't use the word concern attached to Justin Verlander, but concerned giving him the baseball in this situation tonight that, once again, you're not going to see vintage Verlander. Um, I would certainly not be concerned giving him the ball, but he has not been vintage Verlander. And remember, he pitched on short rest in this postseason, and maybe, maybe that's catching up to him just a little bit. Maybe all the pitches he's thrown, maybe 36, maybe. But I also know that, you know, he's made six World Series starts and hadn't won any of them. No one's ever done that in baseball history. So I have a feeling he's going to be cognizant of all of this and dial up a really good one. Whether he has his greatest stuff or not, I think he finds a way. Do you think if you're Dave Martinez, you tinker with the lineup in any way? And I mentioned it in the opening block today. Maybe you see if you could get Soto up one peg or two just because you have so much faith in him. He's actually swinging the bat now, one of the better guys in your lineup, just to get him an extra at bat possibly in this game. I don't think so. I think they're going to certainly go with the top four guys in order that they've used all year, that they've used since they've gotten hot, you know, at the really beginning of June. So it'll be the same four to start with, I'm pretty sure. Now, what he does at second base, what he does down in the lineup, Pretty much use the same lineup the entire postseason. I don't see that changing tonight. What does your gut tell you? Do you think that we have a game tomorrow night, or do you think it ends? <laughs> well, again, Dan, my gut has been wrong about six times. We've all been the there. <laughs> all of us, we have no idea what's going on, which, of course, is the best part. I'm, I picked the Astros in seven to begin with, but I'm going to say it ends tonight, but I – I base that on nothing, gut feel, analytics, nothing. This is baseball, and this series especially has made no sense. Well, the home. this is a team that won 60 games at home during the regular season, Tim. Can we really see them losing three straight? That's what I'm kind of holding on to here more than anything else, just to maybe think that they got this momentum and it's going to keep on going into tonight. Well, this will be the – if the Nationals win tonight, it will be the first best of seven series in baseball history – in which the road team won each of the first six games of any postseason seven-game series. That's what we're looking at tonight, history in the making, if the, the Nationals win tonight. It's 2019. Who's to say we can't rewrite some more history, Tim? Always appreciate it. Should be fun out there. Enjoy the game, and we'll catch up again soon, Tim. Thanks for joining me. Okay, Dan. See ya. All right, Tim Kirchin, our outstanding ESPN MLB analyst. Remember, you can listen to the World Series tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN Radio. We'll do some college football coming up at the top of the hour. Paul Feinbaum joins me in studio. When we come back, we'll give you some breaking NFL news 
And we are still a couple of hours away even from the trade deadline, what promises to be a busy Tuesday. But from celebrating Newt Rockney to the fall of USC, the Down and Distance podcast, hosted by Ivan Mizell, covers eight stories from the history of college football. Download today, available wherever you enjoy your podcasts, presented by Cintas and LinkedIn. Dan Grassa, in for Stephen A. It's the Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio and ESPN News. What if there was one place you could go to hear the most essential story ever? 